Good afternoon. So I've come out with the day. This is actually day two of the projects I've been doing. So let's have a little recap what I did yesterday. So I finally decided to plant up my onion sets. Now this year I have decided that I am going to do overwinter onions again. Every year I say I'm not going to do them because a lot of them bolt. However, last year Cheryl planted hers up and she, I think she got them from Sutton's. So she ordered mine as well. So I'm going with Shakespeare for my brown and I'm going with Red Winter for my reds. And I've decided the majority of them I'm going to plant in the polytunnel this year. Now, the reason I've decided this, because I feel like that this space will be wasted. I think it'll have a good head start. It's protected. And I just think I can keep an eye on them a bit better. They always end up bashed about by the wind, the rain, and a lot of them bolt as well. So, and fingers crossed, by nursing them this way, I'm going to get a better crop from them. And any other I don't use, I'll put in the beds outside anyway. So, let me show you what I did yesterday. So first of all, I used the module trays from ContainerWise. Now I find these absolutely perfect. You know, they're compact, they're robust, and yes, they are a bit of an investment, and don't get me wrong, I know they're a little bit more costly than having the free ones that you can get from the garden centre. However, they always, always break in and become brittle, and you have to throw them away as well, and it's, it's wasting plastic. So I, my logic is, I'll buy once, and then it should last me a lifetime. So I filled up the module trays with compost and then I added in a tray of the reds and a tray of the browns and all the rest then I'll put outside. So I think the idea is that I'm going to leave them in the module trays for a few weeks so they'll have a good root system and that's only because the beds weren't ready. They aren't ready in the polytunnel yet. However, today I'm going to sort out a little bit more on the other side. But first of all, I cleared the one side of the polytunnel underneath the staging and then I gave it a good raking over to make sure that all the bits of weeds were out and stuff. And then I finally planted my spring cabbage and I put the April ones on this side and I'm going to put some um, other varieties, a mixture on the other side. So I'll do that today as well. I've got loads to do, loads to plan today. So let's also talk about what we've done in the polytunnel. So as you can see, I still got plenty of spring cabbages to plant out, but I have actually planted underneath here now all of those are spring cabbages and I've also put the lettuces in as well. So I'm happy that those jobs are done. So let me show you how they're going on already within a day or so. So the lettuces are bedded in really, really well already. And I mention these all the time. These are my oak leaf lettuce and I absolutely love them. Crispy, crunchy. They're just perfect. The lettuces are doing okay. There's a few bits of damage here, but I'm expecting that. And then under here, there's a few that's wilting, but I'll give them a good water today and we'll see how we get on. These are some snowball collie that I've also potted on now with a Chinese kale. Again, in the container wise, there's so many different sizes. These ones aren't container wise. I bought these and they're quite robust. And um, Steve House over at Digwell Greenfingers um, put me onto these and they've been absolutely perfect. So cheers, Steve, for that. So as I mentioned, still plenty of cabbages. And uh, behind here, look, the giant spinach that I sowed, that's coming up already. And I've also got some Chinese kale, snowball collies, extra ones, Japanese chard, guardsman spring onions, and the chives and the, oh my God, look. So we've got some senchu onions that have come up as well. So I'm gonna be doing some overwintering onions by seed. These, 
they did not come up the spring onions here but it is what it is and also i've been giving some corn flowers to overwinter by a plot holder thank you for that linda so i've still got some stragglers some tomatoes here and i mean these ones have been absolutely beautiful this year so i'll harvest them today everything is dying off now and it's just time to get it all out so it's almost time to plant your garlic as well and this is my elephant garlic it's pretty robust it's pretty it's a good hefty bulb this one is but these are saved seed that i collected this summer and I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to plant a lot of it down the grapevine garden. It gets a lot more sun than on the fig and olive. And I had a great crop from down there. So, you know, try not to fix something that's not even broken. So it works down there. So that's where it's going. I'll put the odd one up here, but I had a better crop down there. So they like, you know, well drained soil, um, a lot of sunlight and a good, you know, good fed bed. So that's where I'm going to put it down there, straight down the grapevine garden. So I'll do that now on October the 12th. I don't know why, but I've looked in my diary and that seems to be the date that I always plant on. And it's worked for me. It worked for me last year. So that's what I'm doing this year as well. I had a lovely day over here yesterday and I actually recommend if you've got a polytunnel, a greenhouse or a shed, even if it's a rainy day, pop over to your plot because it's just nice to show some presence on it. And you know, you, you don't want to keep avoiding your plot in these horrible times think, ah, I'll rot down and then in spring I'll come back because I promise you, those weeds will take over your plot over autumn and winter. So just keep on top of those things. And I spent the time in the polytunnel. It was raining a little bit, but I had a podcast on and I've started doing that as well, listening to podcasts and just potting on and planting things up and just doing odd little jobs. And, you know, it's just nice. It's, it's a good bit of therapy. So as you can see, it's looking like a bomb site, but I've cleared all the nasturtiums and all the extra bits now. I've got a good bit of cleaning, but the pot, the compost heaps are, um, they, they're on their way to be filled to the top, but they keep dropping down and I can put more in. So as you can see, everything now is, is coming to the ground and it's flattening down. And can you believe this was, a, this was a jungle only a month or so ago, but that's the way it is. But I've noticed this, look at all these nasturtiums. God, I'm gonna have trouble with these next year. <laughs> but look, look what I've noticed. One, two, I've got two baby banana plants coming here and they call them paps. So I'm happy that I've got two off this, this beautiful lady here. And while we're at it, look at this, look at this just climbing. I just climbed through this to show you this. I didn't even know this was sure, but how beautiful is that? There's still a little bit of hint of color coming through. These dahlias, God, they're doing so well. This must be a late blooming one, but I've got plans for the dahlias as well. So I've actually decided to change the layout for this and quite drastically as well. Yes, I loved having all this open space. And I don't want to get to the point where it's like the Great Van Garden where it's row after row after row. That is totally fine for that plot. But up here, I like it being a bit more organic, a bit more um, rustic, and also a little bit where I can just move things around a bit more and have some space. But I have decided on one thing. These sage beds that I bought from Sutton's, I absolutely love them. They're a perfect size. They're just, they're just perfect. I think they're about four foot by three foot and they're just good growing spaces. Look at all this lettuce growing in here now as well in autumn. Beautiful. So I've decided to get four more that I'm going to put on this plot. I think I'm going to move those two from the back here and I'm thinking about putting them in a row at the front. It'll give it a nice bit of um, boundary from the other plot holders. I'm still going to have this space um, very open planned for pumpkins things, but this didn't work. What happened was the paths on either side here, they just become beds and everything was climbing over it. And I actually lost a lot of my leeks over here that I planted, which was a shame. But I can see now they're pushing themselves back up through and they, they're growing straight again. But yeah, it, it, lesson learned with that as well. So they are a bit of an investment. And yes, I bought them myself. You know, it's not a pay promotion or nothing. I, any money that I make from this channel, whether it's people donating, whether it's the membership or whether it's, you know, the money that I get from the adverts, and trust me, it's not a lot, 
But all that money goes into a little pot and I put everything back onto the channel. I'm not here to try and make a business out of it. I've got my, you know, I've got my job and I just, this is fun for me. This is fun. I like sharing with you all, but the money will always go back onto the channel and I've decided to spend that money and I was looking back and forth, what could I spend it on? Because I don't like it there. I get a little bit anxious actually when I see that money, they're thinking, I, I feel like it's not mine. I feel like it's the channel. So I've decided I'm going to invest in four more beds and put them on the plot and then they can be used for things like salads, for um, trellises and I'm going to use it for archways in between them as well. So I've got an idea for them. I'm going to turn it into a bit of a kitchen garden. So I still have it all growing down the grapevine garden. But up here, I'm going to actually be cooking on the plot a little bit more. So I want things up here that I can plant up in, especially autumn and winter and like Swedes, carrots, potatoes and things that I can actually just pick up on the ground pop into the pot and make a nice stew and stuff as well. So that's the plan for those as well. They'll be more of a kitchen garden thing. Maybe one will be a herb bed. Um, who knows? It's quite alarming really when you see it like this and you just think, God, look at the mess. And it looks like I've just taken over the plot and I've got all the work to do, but this is the real allotment life. You know, it's not all about it all looking Instagram worthy at all times. This is, this is what happens. You know, you go weed seeds, you go weeds. You know, this is, this is what happens on a plot and you will have good times, you will have bad times and you'll have drastic times where you think I'm giving it up, I've had enough. Everyone gets that, believe me. But for some reason we push through those days and then we get excited for spring again. We start ordering our seeds planting bulbs and then also then springs you again and we forget all about it but this won't take me long now a few days i'll clear all this through there'll be empty beds i'll cover them over so that the weeds don't take over them again over autumn and winter and then we'll be good to go for spring so another job that i've actually come over today to do is help lisa so she's got an old chicken coop on her plot it's actually situated in between the great van garden and the fig and olive plot and she hasn't got no chickens anymore so she wants to take him down so you can have a nice growing space for next year so me mark ollie a few of us have decided to come over we're going to rip that down to the ground so she's got a nice space so it's just nice to help other people as well and i'm sure the favor will come back to us all in different times if it doesn't it doesn't matter you know it's not about that it's about helping each other and we all have good growing spaces so i'm going to go down there now get that done we've actually planned fish and chips as well on the plot afterwards so that's a good treat. And then I'll come back up here then and get my jobs done. Full of fish and chips. Not gonna happen, is it? I'll try and make it happen. Hi Linda. Hello. Having fun. <laughs> <laughs> so Mark who actually organised this, I think he's fallen asleep in his shed so we're going to go down now and have a look if he's there. <laughs> Well, thanks for organising the coop uh, demolition and then turn up. Oh, <laughs> it's no, all done. Guys, even think about that. Job. <laughs> yeah, cheers, Mark. <laughs> <sighs> that was actually hard work, but I'm glad for Lisa now. She's got that space. She can plan it out and use it for spring. There's a lot of sunlight there as well, so it'd be great for growing brassicas, maybe even her garlic. That reminds me, I've got to actually. Um, sort out my garlic today as well because I'm giving a lot of it away. I grew a lot last year and harvested in summer, ready to share out as well. So Lisa's having some, a few other YouTubers are having it, so I've got to post all that off, but there's always loads of jobs to do, I tell you. I'm Danny and this is The Grapevine Garden. <laughs>